This is the Thermarest NeoAir Topo Lux Inflatable Sleeping Pad. For folks who need extra support and comfort on their adventures, it is a perfect fit. Let's take a look at the details. I'm sure anyone who has spent a night in the backcountry can agree a good night's sleep can make or break your trip. For those of us who need a little extra comfort to get the rest we need, this pad provides an impressive four inches of thickness. The internal structure consists of Thermarest's patented triangular core matrix, which uses a stacked system of horizontal triangular baffles. This technology has two important benefits. It creates a staple sleep surface for maximum comfort, and it helps with the insulating properties of the pad. With an R value of 3.7, it's appropriate for three-season pursuits. The easy-to-use twin-lock valve system makes setting up camp and packing up again in the morning a breeze. Two one-way valves allow for easy inflation and deflation. To make things even easier, Thermarest includes a pump sack so you don't have to fill the pad up by breath. This model is available in a few different sizes, so be sure to check out the specifications to determine the best fit for your needs. All but one of the size options weigh under two. If you're looking for a little bit of luxury on your next trip, check out the Thermarest NeoAir Topo Lux inflatable sleeping pad. For the full specs and the latest price, click the link in the description. And I'm here today to demonstrate the LED Lenser H14R.2 headlamp. The LED Lenser H14R.2 headlamp is even more powerful than its predecessor, coming in at 850 lumens in the high mode. It's been completely redesigned to be brighter, easier to use, and to give you more options than ever before. One of the biggest changes to the H14R.2 headlamp is that the on-off button is now located near the head of the headlamp instead of on the battery pack. Press the button once for a low output, press again for a high, or you can use the wheel on the back of the battery pack to adjust from the maximum level all the way down. Thanks for watching today. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Featherstone's UL Obsidian One Person Backpacking Tent. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to open up the bag, lay everything out here. So right off the top, we do have a footprint. Now this tent does have an external footprint, which is a huge bonus in a lot of backpacking tents nowadays. Often you'll find these as a separate purchase. This comes with the tent. So really great added value to the tent. Here I've got the tent body. Now before I unroll this, I just want to show you guys the size of this so not very big at all it is a very compressible tent I know it looks big in the stuff sack but that's just because everything's bound up in there if you were to pack this in your backpack separate as I do it actually goes in there very very small so this is the tent body we then have the tent pulls reaching down in here I've got the tent fly set that off to the side and then we have a bag of guy lines and tent pegs so they do have a little bit of cordage on the end so you can retrieve them out of the ground. And they're a standard Y stake. I wanna say about six inches in length. We've got more than enough for the tent and the guy lines and everything that you need right there. So we'll push those off to the side. We then have the aluminum poles. Now this is a two pull system, or sorry, a one pull system, but it branches off. I like the color, I like the features inside of it. It doesn't weigh too heavy, so it does make a very good trail tent, and you can lighten up the trail weight as well. So I hope this helped you guys out with the Obsidian One UL backpacking tent from Featherstone. Peace out guys, and I'll see you in the next video. And today we've got the Garberg Full Tank Fixed Blade from Mora Knives. This knife has a blade made from 14C28N, which is a stainless steel from Sandvik. This knife is going to take a very fine edge and is going to have excellent edge retention and corrosion resistance. 14C28N was a modification produced specifically for additional corrosion resistance. It's got a nice satin stonewash finish here on the flats and a full satin finish on the grinds. This is a Scandi grind with a slight micro bevel. You can see that there in the light. It's got a very robust blade thickness for strength in tasks like batoning and it does have a very sharp squared spine which is going to be great for creating powdered tinder as well as striking sparks from a ferro rod. 
The knife has a polyamide handle that is single molded around the full tang blade and is very comfortable and contoured. No hot spots here and provides a very secure grip all around. And it also has a tang exposed on the end that is also gonna be great for striking sparks as well as for striking or light prying tasks. The Garberg comes with two different sheath options. So this is the premium leather sheath. You can see here that it is a deep pouch style sheath that holds the knife very securely. And in addition, it also has a large leather flap that secure. Thanks for watching and stay sharp. The Garmin InReach Mini recently got a refresh with the release of a new version, the Garmin InReach Mini 2. The InReach Mini is still very small. It fits into your hand really easily and can fit into a pocket no problem. It also only weighs 100 grams, so it's a very lightweight device. Some of the improvements that Garmin made were to battery life as well as how it charges. So the Garmin InReach Mini 2 uses USB-C charging which is awesome. I love USB-C cables because you can put them in either direction and it's going to go in no problem. Compare that to micro USB cables which are directional and you have to make sure that it's going in the right direction. That USB-C also allows it to charge twice as fast as micro USB. The InReach Mini 2 uses a 950 milliamp hour battery and Garmin advertises that that will get you 60 days of battery life performance if you have it in 30 minute tracking and have clear view of the skies. If you don't have clear view of the skies and you're Get 10 days of battery life so you'll get that sort of reduced battery life if you're in a treed forested area I've used dozens of camp stoves, but have been using the MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe since it came out a few years ago. And while not an affordable stove by any stretch of the imagination, it's arguably one of the best camp stoves on the market. The Pocket Rocket Deluxe puts out 10,400 BTU of power, which is a lot of power. Most stoves out there put out less than 10,000 BTU. That extra horsepower translates into faster boil times. The Pocket Rocket Deluxe can boil one liter of water in three minutes and 20 seconds. It's also a very efficient stove. In order to boil a liter of water, it uses less than 15 grams of fuel. Both those numbers are under ideal conditions. And most of the time, when you're in the backcountry, you're not boiling water in ideal conditions. But the Pocket Rocket Deluxe has some features that allow it to continue to chug along and perform well even when conditions are less than ideal. The first feature I want to talk about is this nice wide burner. Not only does the wide burner allow you to have a big steady flame that really helps boil water quicker, but if you're cooking food inside of the pot, then this also spreads the flame out so you're not getting any hot spots and burning the food that you have in the pot. Associated with the burner is it's my go-to stove for shoulder season hikes when temperatures can get a little bit low and it can be a little bit windy. Today we're gonna to take a look at a great camping saw that I've had for a while. It's the Agawa Canyon Boreal 21. So this is the Boreal 21 from Agawa Canyon. It's their 21 inch folding buck saw. Really well made. Dave Canterbury from the Pathfinder School did a side-by-side -side comparison uh, between this saw and the Bob Dustrude saw. And there were some things that he liked a lot better uh, with this saw. One, that it's composite, so uh, there's no wood to swell up or anything like that. Um, really well made. It's got a really well made frame, really well made handle, and it's really comfortable to use. And it also obviously folds down pretty small, so you can just click the, uh, the one side here, and you basically just flip the whole saw around. Uh, just like that, it lays into its own channel here, and the handle pops back, and you have a nice compact folding saw. It weighs about as much as the Silky Big Boy, which we have here, which is another one of my favorite saws, the Silky Big Boy 2000. It's got a little bit longer blade. The uh, Boreal has a little bit longer blade than the Silky Big Boy, but they have their pros and their cons. So really, really. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video today. Let me know what you think in the comment section below.